children should avoid smartphones. Nowadays, many children are provided with mobile phones since early ages in order to, according to some parents, keep in contact with their parents when they are out home. But, are we aware of the risks that new smartphones have? As I see it, new technologies and children should be controlled by adults as far as is possible. My main reason to think this is a psychological reason. Young children are not able to understand the risks and problems that smartphones can produce. Children want to be as their classmates, to be in fashion. Managing a smartphone with its characteristics is a difficult task which requires maturity. Another reason is Internet and its wide world connection. It is a well-known fact that loading photos to Internet means lose your privacy. When a picture is loading in known social networks as Facebook, it is imposable to know where the picture ends up. Some people argue that children today need to carry mobile phones so their parents will be able to locate them at any time. Moreover, they say that having a rechargeable card is a good way to control the spent money by children. I can be agree with that, children today go out more than us in the past, and it is a good way to know where they are. To sum up, I strongly believe that we should teach our children about the new technology's risks. From schools and homes we have to talk with them about it. New technologies emerge to improve our life quality, from the knowledge they can fulfill their designated purpose. Technology has done a lot to make our lives easier and more efficient. Yet as a parent, you ought to be concerned about the impact that devices such as smartphones can have on your child. At a time when it is becoming commonplace for kids to have their own mobile device, shouldn't you be worried about what negative impact a smartphone could have on your child's growth? Break your addiction to your phone. Try phone stacking in a meeting or at a family meal. Everyone puts their device in the middle of the table and the first to reach for theirs has to do a forfeit, such as to make tea for everyone, buy the next round or wash up. Keep tech out of the bedroom, light from screen stops production of the hormone melatonin, which is vital for getting to sleep, so leave them to charge in a different room when you go to bed. Keep your phone out of sight and reach when you're driving. Even hands-free phone systems slow reaction times as people don't concentrate on the road. Don't eat at your desk. Go outside at lunchtime instead. Not only does it get you away from your screen, it stops you from sitting down too long, also very bad for you. They alter the parent-child relationship. Even while smartphones can be convenient, they alter the bonding that is supposed to exist between a parent and child. The connectivity attached with smartphone use cannot be the same as the genuine connection which the parent and child are meant to have. Children are still passing through a period of growth, and you need to establish your relationship with them. With smartphones, you have speed and instant answers available. Yet this could lead to your kids making bad choices in the long run. It limits their creative minds. With easy access through a smartphone to a majority of their play, kids now have a platform to be bombarded with various exciting games. These games limit their creativity and imaginations and slow their motor and optical sensory development. It causes them to get less sleep. According to this study, a smartphone in the bedroom can bring about significantly less sleep, later bedtimes, and more fatigue. Your child needs to be getting plenty of sleep and have his brain rested for the next day's activities. A smartphone certainly wouldn't help him attain that. It doesn't give kids the time to reflect or learn about the consequences of their actions. Imagine a kid having a conversation on a chat site and things go wrong. 
I wish you lose your life is uttered at him. Even perfectly nice kids would spontaneously react by saying, I wish you lose your life too. This happens because the child is not offered the opportunity to reflect on the impact and their negativity of their actions or what they say. With a smartphone, things happen first. It impedes their ability to learn. According to researchers, a smartphone is detrimental to a child's social economic development as it diverts a child's attention. According to the findings, the use of interactive screen time on such devices could also impair a child's development of the skills needed for math and science. It causes an addiction. It jeopardizes the child's overall development. By engaging them in so many activities, a smartphone could become a source for an addiction. This kind of addiction engages their minds and captivates them for a long time, even to adulthood. It has a negative impact on your child's mental health. According to experts, amongst the causes of depression and anorexia in kids is the use of the smartphone and connection to the Internet. Since through it kids are bullied and often unsupervised, there is a negative impact on their mental health. It indirectly causes obesity. Too much time spent on smartphones also affects the physical health of your kids. With a smartphone, your child is subjected to remaining at a particular spot. For hours, such technology overuse is now a factor causing obesity. Why you shouldn't give a child a smartphone or tablet a child. It can change the child-parent relationship. Between the ages of 0 and 2 years, an infant's brain triples in size. A parent's voice, touch, and eventually play can help build pathways in their brain that aid them in learning how to bond emotionally with other people. But for children who spend too much time interacting with a screen, something different happens. The neural pathways change and different ones are created, says pediatric nurse Denise Daniels. It affects concentration, self-esteem, in many cases they don't have as deeply personal relationships. It becomes their first addiction. One of the wonderful things with this technology is that there's always something new you can do, it's almost infinite, says Dr. Gary Small a professor of psychiatry and director of the UCLA Longevity Center at the Simmel Institute for Neuroscience and Human Behavior. For that very reason, it's very difficult to give up and stop using them. Smartphones and tablets allow a kid to get whatever they want at the click of a button. It does not teach them moderation, impulse control, or how to challenge themselves, which are traits of an addictive personality. It sparks tantrums. If someone has an addiction, they will throw a fit if you take what they are obsessed with away from them. At any age. However, giving a kid a smartphone or tablet to pacify them when they are having a tantrum isn't a great idea, either. If these devices become the predominant method to calm and distract young children, Will they be able to develop their own internal mechanisms of self-regulation? It prevents them from sleeping. It's no secret that curling up with your smartphone, tablet, or e-reader before you go to bed at night makes it more difficult to fall asleep. The light that emits from a screen suppresses the sleep hormone melatonin and shifts the body's natural sleep-wake cycle. It seems that use of these devices in the evening before bedtime really has this negative impact on our sleep and on your circadian rhythms, said Anne-Marie Chang, a neuroscientist. It is estimated that 60% of parents do not supervise their child's technology usage, 75% of children are allowed technology in their bedrooms. Because of this, 75% of children aged 9 and 10 years are sleep deprived to the extent that their grades go down, according to Boston College. 
it affects their ability to learn. According to researchers, a smartphone is harmful to a child's ability to learn because it distracts their attention. These devices also may replace their hands on activities important for the development of sensory motor and visual motor skills, which are important for the learning and application of math and science. Adds Jenny Radsky, MD, Clinical Instructor in Developmental Behavioral Pediatrics at Boston University. Video and online games also limit kids' budding creativity and imaginations and slow their motor and optical sensory development. It doesn't allow them to reflect on their actions. It's easy to say something bad about someone behind their back but it's certainly not so easy to say it to someone's face. You can see their hurt facial expression and feel their pain, forcing you to reflect and feel remorse. But if you say it online, all of that goes out the window. You can't see things like voice, inflection, body language, facial expression and even feel pheromones. These are all fundamental to establishing human relationships and they're all missing with most forms of modern technology, says psychologist Jim Taylor. Kids are spending so much time communicating through technology that they're not developing basic communication skills that humans have used since forever. Communication is not just about words. It increases the likelihood of mental illness. Because it's easier to be emotionally detached when online more people are cyberbulled. There are also tons of images and forums online that can make a developing child or teen feel uneasy about their growing body. According to experts, too much time on smartphones or tablets has been a factor in rising rates of child depression, anxiety, attachment disorder, attention deficit disorder, psychosis, and problematic child behavior. It can lead to obesity. We are often stationary when we use a device, so if a child is addicted to one, they are not moving while they use it. That means limited physical activity, which increases the likelihood of weight gain. Children who are allowed a device in their bedrooms have 30% increased incidence of obesity, according to one. Study. When a child becomes obese, there are a lot of other concerns that pop up as well. 30% of children with obesity will develop diabetes, and obese individuals are at higher risk for early stroke and heart attack. Some experts even believe that 21st century children may be the first generation that will not outlive their parents due to obesity and high use of tech devices. It makes them aggressive. Because kids can't learn empathy when overusing devices, they are much more comfortable being mean online, and being cyberbullied almost feels normal to a lot of kids. There is also a huge variety of violent video games that might desensitize kids towards violence. This mainstreaming of aggression prompts kids to think. That violent behavior is simply a normal way to deal with and solve problems. It encourages social anxiety. Learning social skills is imperative to a child's overall success. If they are nervous interacting with other people, it may hamper their ability to be the best that they can be. Technology should make communication easier when it's appropriate. Dr. Kate Roberts a Boston-based school psychologist says. But when we have access, we don't use it. Part of it is just that it's human nature to avoid. It's easier. Although a child may be resistant, it's good to challenge them. Have them put down the phone and interact with their family and other kids their age so that they can recognize facial expressions and body language learn empathy, and feel more at ease around people when they are adults. Kids need that face-to-face -face time, Denise Daniels says. If you abbreviate your emotions with technology, you're living an abbreviated life.
Bad Effects of Tablets and Smartphones During the child's first years, his brain develops rapidly, and very young children learn best by interacting with people, not screens. Being head down and having no eye contact with people might be harmful to their brain development. Screens distract one or two year olds from interacting with parents, siblings, and other kids. Dan Siegel of Mindful Awareness Research Center thinks this may impede language, social, and emotional development. It may affect children's development of insights, empathy, ways of knowing themselves, and connecting with relationships. Also, toddlers need to be active physically. They should be actively exploring their environment, and not sedentary, getting almost all of stimulations from screen, and not building their bodies through physical play. This is why the American Academy of Pediatrics do not recommend screen time for kids younger than two. Babies and toddlers learn better with materials they can touch, versus what they see on a screen. Exploring concepts in three dimensions is better than two dimensions. For cognitive development. Studies suggest that children ages 3 to 5 whose parents read to them through electronic books had lower reading comprehension compared to physical books. Part of the reason is because the bells and whistles from books in electronic devices distract the kids and parents from focusing on the story. On the other hand, another study shows that two-year-old learned words faster with an interactive app than one that is passive. Doctors are concerned that overexposure to screen has an impact on attention span and concentration, as well as appetite control. Tablets and smartphones take time away from other activities. Older children should have more time with playing outdoors, reading, engaging in hobbies, or using their imagination with free play. A 2014 study by UCLA's Children's Digital Media Center suggests that when screen time limits face-to-face -face interaction, kids' social skills may be negatively affected, and this may blind them from understanding the emotions of other people. Social and emotional intelligence are critical to success in life. According to Catherine Steiner Adair, a Harvard-affiliated clinical psychologist, children need time to daydream, deal with anxieties, process their thoughts and share them with parents, who can provide reassurance. This is not what happens when children would rather play with tablets and smartphones while in a car ride. Low-achieving and low-income school kids are more vulnerable to screen distractions, according to a University of Texas study measuring students passing a compulsory end-of-term exam. On the other hand, high-ability students are still able to concentrate with the presence of smartphones. Children who sleep near a small screen average 20.6 fewer minutes of sleep every night. This may be caused by the high levels of blue light emitted by their screens which depletes melatonin, a hormone linked to circadian rhythm. The extra screen time at night are resetting their body's clocks in a way that makes it difficult for them to sleep, especially if they are just entering or are in the early stages of puberty. This results in lack of sleep and insufficient rest. Less face time. More access to predators. Compulsive texting. Cheating in school. Health risks. Addiction. Limits their creative minds. Less face time. When children are developing, they need a great deal of face time with their parents in order to develop like they should. Face time with families has decreased from an average of 26 hours a week in 2007 to an average of 18 hours per week in 2010. This reduces the amount of time that children have to interact with their parents and develop properly. Children need positive role models and positive examples.
If they are simply staring at a smartphone all the time, then they may not be getting what they need. More access to predators. Sexual predators are more prevalent now than ever before. Individuals who prey on little children spend all of their free time online looking for their next victim. If your child has a smartphone, he or she may be spending time on chat rooms or social media sites and connecting with these sexual predators. They may think that they are talking to another child or someone they can trust. If they set up a meeting with this person outside of your supervision, it could be a huge problem. Compulsive texting. One of the big problems that could develop from having a smartphone is compulsive texting. Many children who have smartphones learn that they can text message their friends and then they want to do nothing else. They always want to read their latest text messages and respond to them right away. If you don't let them get their hands on a smartphone, then they won't develop this addiction at an early age. Cheating in school. Another issue that many parents have to deal with when they give their child a smartphone is cheating in school. When a child has a device that allows them to easily communicate with others, they can use it to get the answers to a test. For instance, they can quickly text message one of their friends outside of class so that they can look up an answer for them. This can lead to suspension, detention, or even expulsion from school. If the smartphone was not present in this situation, then that issue would have never come up. Health risks. Since cell phones are still kind of new in society, the health risks of them are not fully known yet. A number of studies have led to some questions about how healthy it is for a child to be talking on a cell phone regularly. The cell phone lets off a certain amount of radiation and can cause tumors or other growths inside the body. If the child is subjected to this type of radiation frequently, it could lead to a number of health risks later on in life. In most cases, it is best to wait until your child reaches 16 or higher before they get a smartphone. Use your best judgment, but giving them one too early can lead to issues. The hardest part of parenting is teaching our children things we have not yet mastered. Jesus said I am the bread that gives life. If you come to my table and eat, you will never go hungry. Believe in me, and you will never go thirsty. The only healthy addiction we are hardwired to foster is our relationship with God. Through our walk with Christ, I am, present tense, is all we need. Yet a glance around a full room full of people looking down at a screen instead of each other illustrates the search for happiness elsewhere. Scientific facts tell us the same chemical released when we partake in age-restricted activities like smoking, drinking, alcohol, gambling, or drug use is also released when we use cell phones and social media.